Oh my god, look at that guy over there. Totally basic. <laughs> oh, why thank you for noticing. I have been trying to drink more alkaline water these days. What? I called you basic. And I am. The ionization of my water gives it a higher pH. You know, basic. Like acid and base from high school chemistry. <laughs> Well, the idea is that a low pH in the body leads to inflammation and other health issues, which means basic is the way to go for me. Uh, whatever. Let's go. On the way out, I gotta pick up some bleach. Totally basic! Internet, welcome to Food Theory. Did you know that the FDA recommends three episodes of Food Theory a day to maintain a healthy diet? It could be true. And the first step in that health journey is, of course, subscribing. Now then, if the cold open didn't already beat you over the head with this concept, today we're talking about being basic. But not with Uggs and pumpkin spice lattes and picture of me in my bikini with my bow on vacay. We're talking about the health effects of alkaline water. We've all heard of pH, right? It's that topic that you blocked out of your mind sometime after high school chemistry class, but somehow keeps coming up in Dove commercials. Well, pH is a measure of how acidic or basic something is on a scale. Acidity, or low pH, means that there are a lot of free hydrogen ions floating around in a solution. In fact, the letters P and H literally stand for potential hydrogen, or power of hydrogen that's existing in this solution. More ions means higher acidity and a lower pH. Fewer ions means more alkalinity and a higher pH. And the word used to describe that condition is, of course, basic, hence all the bad puns. Don't worry, you're not going to need to know all the ins and outs of that science stuff in order to understand today's episode. What you do need to know to understand today's episode is that water companies are banking on the fact that you don't understand all the details of that sciency stuff. You see, water is big business. Reports show Americans spending anywhere between 18 and 31 billion dollars per year on bottled water. Why is so much being spent on stuff that literally comes out of the sky for free? Well, many actually believe that bottled water is higher quality water. According to a Consumer Reports survey, 40% of Americans believe bottled water is safer than the cheap stuff that's coming out of your tap. Which is funny when you consider that 64% of all bottled water sold is just filtered tap water. The difference, by and large, is just branding. We're told that the water is pure and healthy and coming from exotic springs. And they're just flipping on a tap over in Jersey City, which is one of the more popular bottling plants. So, to differentiate themselves in an already crowded market, bottled water brands over the last few years have been really hyping up their basic pH levels. You see, normal purified water is supposed to have a completely neutral pH of 7, halfway between the completely acidic number of 0 and the completely basic number of 14. But the alkalinity of water has become the new big talking point, like Fiji's slightly alkaline 7.7 .7 rating, or Essentia's more aggressive 9.5 alkalinity. And, like all fads, ionized water even had its own dedicated store in Brooklyn called the Hydration Station, where you could join their VIP water club for alkaline water. Or heck, if it was too much of a hassle, you could just drop a couple thousand dollars on your own at-home water ionizer. Now, I was ready to say that all of this was just a bunch of marketing mumbo-jumbo until I read an article about NBA players and their devotion to high pH water for health and performance. It's unlikely that I'm ever going to play for the NBA. At a height of 5'10", it was never really going to matter how much I could sports the ball through the basketball circle. But I've actually met some NBA players in the past, and I've never seen people that are so conscious about what they put in their bodies. So if they're believing the hype, maybe there's something there. Plus, we did an episode a few months back where I totally expected to debunk the NBA's obsession with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, where they thought it was some sort of secret weapon giving them an edge on the court. Except it turned out to be completely true, and not only true, but the team that started the whole trend, the Milwaukee Bucks, went on to win it all this year. So they're eating their PB&Js, and I'm just eating my words. So now when these guys say things like, stick to alkaline water with a higher pH, trust me on that. I'm now more inclined to, you know, trust them. But not all the way. I trust these super athletic giants enough to do my own research on the topic. Today we're going to venture to answer a couple of questions. One, what is alkaline water supposed to do for you in the first place? Two, does it work? And three, are we just going to wind up like the water boy himself, Bobby Boucher? I had a lot to keep me busy checking the pH levels and refilling the cups. Or this guy. Gatorade not only quenches your thirst better, it tastes better too. Water sucks. It really, really sucks. Water 
sucks. First things first, what are the supposed benefits of alkaline water and how is it supposed to work? A quick Google search will find that people have a lot of opinions about the health benefits of alkaline water, with its miraculous abilities ranging anywhere from handling basic indigestion to literally saving your life. That is just barely an exaggeration. Most of the belief revolves around the idea that the food and drinks that we consume tend to be acidic, and that drinking alkaline water will help balance out the pH of the body and blood, which itself is slightly alkaline, sitting at a pH of around 7.4. But some of the claims get a bit more grandiose. One is that alkaline water replenishes the body with minerals like calcium and potassium, and therefore reduces the risk of your bones evaporating out of your body thanks to osteoporosis. We could spend hours going over the various things that the internet says alkaline water can do for you, but the major ones are as follows. Alkaline water improves athletic performance and recovery by hydrating you better. It gets rid of acid reflux by neutralizing stomach acids. The higher calcium content strengthens bones and slows osteoporosis. And the big guns, the antioxidants in alkaline water reduce free radicals, thereby slowing the aging process and helping to prevent cancer. Yeah, we are not just talking about whether alkaline water tastes better or hydrates you slightly better than regular water. We are talking about a cure for brittle bones and outright stopping cancer. It's like alkaline water is some sort of fountain of youth. But is there any actual evidence to back up these claims? Well, let's look at the data, starting with where my interest in this whole episode began, athletic performance. When it comes to sports and water, one study demonstrated that alkaline water is a bit better than neutral pH water in accelerating the utilization of lactate by the body's muscles. If it's been a minute since high school biology, lactate, or lactic acid, is produced when muscles are under strain, which causes that familiar burning feeling that we associate with exercise. Or, if you're me, going up more than one flight of stairs at a time. Seriously, when your job's to make internet videos for a solid decade, it's pretty easy to get soft around the edges. Anyway, washing away the lactate means more stamina, which is probably why professional athletes are all drinking the high alkaline Kool-Aid. If alkaline water is allowing them to push themselves harder without getting as tired, there's a pretty clear benefit directly to them. So, the first conclusion here? Not all that surprising. Alkaline water is good at hydrating you and replacing your electrolytes, because it's basically Gatorade minus the sugar. But what if you're not an elite athlete? What if your problems are more mundane, like the heartburn that you get after eating fistfuls of buffalo wings while trying to unlock Super Smash Brothers characters? Well, alkaline water has been shown to help there too. Alkaline water has been shown to be useful for acid reflux. The high pH water deactivates pepsin, the enzyme that makes your stomach produce hydrochloric acid, which is what's going to give you heartburn. And this, again, is not rocket science. It's actually basic chemistry. Acid plus base equals a more neutral substance. And when you're suffering from too much acidity, drinking something basic is going to equal relief. It's doing the same thing that a Tums is doing. That is the good news. The bad news is that the relief that you feel from drinking alkaline water is roughly what you get if you took an antacid tablet, except not as good. Alkaline water is unlikely to be a long-term solution to chronic acid reflux, and even basic antacid tablets are somewhat time-released, whereas alkaline water it just kind of hits your stomach and is immediately neutralized, and boom, you're all done. This is going to provide very little relief for chronic acid reflux, in a condition known as GERD. And I tell you that little bit of information because I just love the name GERD. Not to make light of the condition, but part of me really hopes it's named after the doctor who discovered it, and that doctor's first name was Irma. Irma GERD! <laughs> Anyway, the reason water doesn't work here is that GERD isn't necessarily caused by acidity, but rather because the muscle separating the very acidic stomach from the relatively neutral esophagus isn't closing properly. In these sorts of chronic cases, the real solution is usually drugs or surgery, so using alkaline water would be a little like putting a band-aid over a gunshot wound. But now, it's time to get to the big claims, like that one that says that alkaline water is gonna slow your skeleton turning to dust. Is alkaline water actually gonna be able to help you with osteoporosis? Now, milk! I get. Milk is filled with calcium, and calcium makes your bones stronger, thereby slowing osteoporosis. But why would alkaline water, heck, any form of water, help you in this case? Not like alkaline water contains calcium, right? Right? Like, why would it? Well, surprisingly, it does. Well, if alkaline water contains calcium, and it does, then it's gonna be good for your bones, right? Mm -hmm. Not really. A study published in 2012 found that a heavily alkaline diet will affect the pH in your urine, but pretty much nowhere else in your body, concluding that, quote, there is no substantial evidence that increased alkalinity improves bone health or protects from osteoporosis. Basically, calcium getting to the bones just isn't going to happen when it's appearing in such low amounts so far down the pipeline. If you're truly looking to prevent osteoporosis, studies suggest that regular exercises is going to be beneficial, as is not being a woman, because yes, that sort of stuff matters. It's a hormone 
hormonal thing. If alkaline water doesn't have much scientific support in its ability to stop heartburn and broken hips, you can probably start to see the writing on the wall for its ability to reverse aging and prevent cancer. The idea here is, at least in theory, pretty darn solid. That alkaline water could neutralize free radicals. For those of you who don't know, free radicals are the tiny little chaotic neutral of your body's molecules, with crazy extra electrons flying around all over the place that can randomly collide with your cells in their DNA, damaging them, causing all kinds of problems, including cancer. The damage is known as oxidative stress, and it's basically tiny stray electron bullets shooting holes into your cells. The bad news is that we all have oxidative damage, but antioxidants claim to reduce this damage by catching some of those stray electrons shooting all over the place. Alkaline water claims to be one such antioxidant because, again, acidic extra electrons plus basic molecule equals neutral molecule. So there are a couple issues at play here. First is that most of the sources I find that claim alkaline water helps with cancer all claim that alkaline water also contains antioxidants, but they're very scant on details about how this water is making your entire body basic enough to neutralize free radicals. Nothing about blood concentrations or the number of free radicals neutralized. It's probably just a coincidence that several of those websites have links to expensive water ionization systems that you can buy in the comfort of your own home, right? Realistically, what you're going to find in alkaline water are ions of elements like magnesium, calcium, and potassium, which are all positively charged and could, in theory, accept a stray electron and become neutral. In most cases, these molecules need to be ionized so they can remain dissolved in water. And even if you're still like, yes, this water is an antioxidant and you won't tell me any differently, as you fork over $8 for a 20-ounce bottle, we can't ignore the fact that, quote, overall, nine randomized controlled clinical trials did not provide evidence that dietary antioxidant supplements are beneficial in primary cancer prevention. So, nope, doesn't appear that alkaline water is going to be doing anything for your cancer treatment. But, nah, I'm sure this article that was written must have an agenda too, right? What kind of quack website did I pull this quote from? The National Cancer Institute. Okay, maybe I'm going to take their word on this one. But all joking aside, no scholarly literature suggests that alkaline water or an alkaline diet is going to help in the prevention and treatment of cancer. Just has not been shown to be true. But hold that phone, ladies and gentlemen. Television health guru Dr. Oz had a big segment about alkaline water on his show. He's a trustworthy source, right? No, no, he's not. But you know what he found? That alkaline water had pretty much no discernible effect on detoxifying or neutralizing or doing pretty much anything on your body other than maybe alleviating heartburn and definitely making you hydrated. When a woman claimed that she drank alkaline water because it would give her more energy and prevent aging, Dr. Oz actually sided with science. So we actually looked into whether drinking alkaline water could change your pH. So that's the first thing, right? Because if it changes your pH, maybe that has that benefit. And actually, I couldn't find a single study showing that it actually changes the pH in the blood. Hold on, this is a guy who's been taking millions of dollars from the supplement industry for years. Dr. Oz pimps out extracts from mushrooms that grow in your yard. He makes claims to have a revolutionary plan to blast your butt. That's right, apparently this plan to blast your butt is revolutionary. People are going to be taken to the streets with torches and pitchforks when they hear about Dr. Oz's plan for that behind. And yet, through it all, Dr. Oz can't bring himself to endorse alkaline water. Forget all the studies and the National Cancer Institute. Dr. Oz not shilling for something is about as damning of evidence I could ever give. Look, I'm not going to say that alkaline water is terrible. If you're a high-level athlete and you find it works better for your performance, or you think it'll help settle your tummy, then go ahead and drink it. But the fact is that the only sacred truth when it comes to water is that you need to drink eight eight-ounce glasses of it per day. Oh wait, that's a lie too, because most of your daily intake of water is already being fulfilled by the food that you eat. There's an anime betrayal for ya. <sighs> and to think, all the Diet Cokes I could have had instead of that putrid spigot juice that I've been choking down trying to be healthier. Well, time to make up for some lost time. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. You know, recently I've been spending a lot more time thinking about what I put into my body. Thanks a lot for that one, food channel. Can't even buy a bottle of water anymore without heading over to Snopes first. And in my journey to reassess how I think about food, I actually turned to Noom, the sponsor for today's episode. For those of you who don't know, I've been on Noom's program for over six months now, and I'm happy to report that my relationship with food is is much healthier than it was before I started. Well, as long as it's not work-related. I'm still recovering from that brief fling I had with the Mountain Dew pizza. Now, I'm not gonna say that the journey's always been easy, but I will say that Noom's program is awfully convenient, because all it takes is just 10 minutes a day to start seeing substantial changes in your life. You see, Noom takes what, in my opinion, is a really efficient approach. The program uses cognitive behavioral therapy to address the habits that are holding us back, and to start working in new
new good habits for our routine. For me, Noom's really got me into the habit of logging my meals. The program has this huge food database, and I mean huge. Whatever I eat, even if it's a meal at a restaurant, it's in the database. Plus, it lets me adjust the portion size in a really easy and intuitive way. I can honestly say that I've never been this good about keeping track of what I eat, and seeing that list firsthand has made me confront some of my worst habits, like how I use snacks to cope with long work days, or the steadily increasing amount of Diet Coke that was taking over my life. And yeah, by calling those things out, I've then been able to take action on them. It's leading to results on the scale for sure, but really the best thing's been all the energy that I suddenly have. Six months into the program, can't wait to see what the next six months have in store. So if it's an energy boost you're looking for, maybe forget about that thousand dollar home ionization machine and give Noom a shot. Take your free 30 second quiz today at Noom.com slash food theory, or click the link in the description to get started now. Again, all it takes is a free 30 second quiz to get started. Noom.com slash food theory. Start getting a handle on your food habits today. Link is down in the description if you prefer to do it the old clicky way. And one final huge thank you to Noom, not only for sponsoring today's episode, but more importantly for helping me regain control of a part of my life that was quickly starting to slip away. Thank you for helping me prioritize my own health. Thank you all for watching, and remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.